Carmen, the very famous story, which would become an opera, was written by Prosper Merime and published in 1846. Prosper Merime was very fascinated by Gypsy Roma culture, and he came across a story that was told to him by the Countess of Montejillo, who incidentally was the mother of Empress Eugenie, the last wife of Napoleon Bonaparte. So, when he was inspired by this story, he created the heroine Carmen, or Carmen Sita, so a gypsy. She was a gypsy who worked in a cigar factory and was very famous for stealing men's hearts and using her feminine wiles to tempt them out of things that she wanted. The story itself, in four parts, begins with a narrator who met a man while he was searching for the famous battle site of Munda, which was the final battle, uh, civil civic war battle of Julius Caesar before he was assassinated. <clears throat> so the narrator meets Don Jose, a dangerous smuggler, and they had some cigars and lunch and they go about their business. Later on, the narrator goes to Cordoba, where he meets Carmen, she reads his fortune and steals his watch. There he encounters Don Jose again, who kind of is like, you need to get out of this house now before things go bad for you. Because Don Jose became insanely jealous for his passion for Carmen. Months later, the narrator hears that Don Jose is going to be executed for murder. And the type of execution during those days and up until 1959 in Spain was the garata. And it's this horrendous torture device where it's um, you're strapped to this like metal or sorry, a wooden chair. And you have like a leather or metal thing that goes around your neck. And behind they have a winch system, which they turn until it gets tighter and tighter and tighter and suffocates you to death. Oh, and the last public um, guillotine in <laughs> in France was in 1977. Think about that. The year of Star Wars. Hmm. So, in the third part, that's when Don Jose reveals exactly what happened. He used to be a soldier in the Dragoons when he met Carmen. When he met her, she, you know, she made fun of him for the fact that, like, she wasn't tempted by him, like everyone else in this whole village. So, you know, in, in the opera, we have that beautiful aria, um, Habanera. After he met Carmen, um, she got in a fight with a woman at a factory and cut an X into her face. Instead of arresting her, he lets her go because she promises him that if he dies, she'll sleep with him for a whole day. Of course, his superiors find out and they throw him in jail and demote him. When he gets out, she, you know, goes upon her word and has sex with him for a whole day. Another part of her payment, she's like... We can do a whole nother day if you kind of let me and my smuggler friends go by and no one will stop us through our illegal activities. So he agrees. When Don Jose encounters that Carmen is also sleeping with a lieutenant, he murders the lieutenant and then has to go on the run because now he's a murderer. So he joins her little band and they go off into the woods and do their illegal activities. He, at this time, also discovers that she's married, and he kills her husband. She then marries Don Jose, you know, and probably has some massive regrets, because 
We've all dated one of those kind of psychos in our lifetime who likes to kick in your doors and shows up when you're DJing. <sighs> Eventually, when she meets a picador, where in the opera it's a matador, and she starts to fall in love with him, uh, she also admits to Don Jose that she does not love him anymore and she really hates herself for ever having loved him. In his frustration, he murders her and then buries her in the woods. Ah, such a lovely love story. Hmm. And the crime, the hmm. the crime rate also in Spain right now is pretty incredibly high of uh, women being murdered by their partners. So, and then of of course, then after uh, he he does feel quite guilty, Don Jose, and he admits to the murder, which is why he's going to be executed. And then the fourth part of the novella is basically a whole history that Prosper Merime wrote about like the language and the culture of Romas because he figured why not just throw in some historical fun facts because who doesn't love historical fun facts? I know I do. The opera itself came out in Paris in 1875, written by Georges Bizet, who unfortunately died uh, quite quickly after. He only was able to see 33 productions before he suddenly died. The opera itself was not super popular when it first came out because it was scandalous. So, and it only received its like world fame once it actually went on production outside of the country. So the story of Carmen is a very tragic story, like all very beautiful stories that are written. She, you know, was a temptress who many loved, which would cause her downfall, which she knew that Don Jose in the end would murder her, and yet she still stayed with him. And for me, when I first encountered this story, because I always loved the opera, but I had to read it in school, and when we were reading it, I was also inspired by the gypsy culture, and basically I stopped reading in school and then um, wrote my first book when I was 17 years old. And actually, that's a book I'm going to start releasing some chapters of, if you guys are interested. And you get to hear me narrate them, so that's kind of fun. So anyways, to Carmen. The rebellious bird that no one could tame. Until they murdered you. And of course, you know, if you want to check out some more videos, um... Subscribe and like, and then also take a look at my Instagram. I do some shorter videos there and on Steam it as well. And if you want to hear some Star Wars content, listen to Legends Library on Coffee with Kenobi. To Carmen, the woman in red. <laughs>